Hide your kids. Lock the doors. You're listening to HR's most dangerous podcast. Chad Sowash and Joel Cheeseman are here to punch the recruiting industry right where it hurts. Complete with breaking news, brash opinion, and loads of snark. Buckle up, boys and girls. It's time for the Chad and Cheese Podcast. Kirby Puckett's favorite podcast, a.k.a. the Chad and Cheese Podcast. I'm your co-host, Joel Cheeseman. Joined, as always, the can't stop to my won't stop. Chad Sowash is in the house. And we welcome again the Bigfoot of Big Data, the Loch Ness of Knowledge, the Sasquatch of Statistics, Toby Dayton, CEO of Link Up. Toby, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. How are you guys? So. So Good for the man. listeners, up to? Uh, it's early morning for us because Toby is so busy and, and working so hard. Uh, what what you been up to, Toby? What what masters you of the universe are the ones shit that are you uh, <laughs> tough to schedule these? Uh, no, it's good. Uh, had a good week off last week, uh, getting one last snowboarding trip in. So there you uh, go. Very nice. There you go. Very working nice. hard, baby. Working hard. Working hard. Well, Chad and I are on the West Coast. Uh, it's just after 6 a.m. I'm on cup three of my uh, my Joe. I don't know where Chad is, but uh, let's get into some uh, data, shall we? Let's get this thing going. So uh, the March report came out. Uh, non- non-farm payrolls increased 303,000 uh, above the Dow Jones estimate of 200,000. Kind of kind of a little bit off there from the estimate to the reality. The unemployment rate edged lower to 3.8%. Uh, wages rose 0.3 percent for the month and 4.1 percent from a year ago. Uh, healthcare led with 72,000 new jobs, followed by government 71,000, leisure and hospitality 49k, and construction 39k. Let's dig in here, Toby. What numbers caught your attention? Wow. Yeah, it was. There were a lot. It's sort of hard. I mean, I I think the what really uh, for for us was just the report as a whole, I think it was the third month of coming in way above expectations. Um, and the, the job market just continues to, to surprise the upside continuously mm-hmm. as has been the case all year. So uh, I, I think it really, the, the, the top headline number, uh, household number was even stronger. Um, you know, there were a couple of in the January and February reports, a few things that people could kind of pick out you know, if you looked hard enough, squinted hard enough, you could find some things that might <laughs> cause concern. All of that went away in in the March report. Oh, they'll and, find something. They'll find something. Yeah. They always do. I mean, they, they tried <laughs> yeah. really hard. And that, you know, one thing that was the sort of last thing was the household survey, which had been sort of diverging away from the establishment survey and yeah, almost 500,000 jobs in the household. So those are back. Yeah sort of well, showing real quick i mean just because of the data because again i mean that's important for listeners especially for listeners who have never never heard uh toby dayton talk about link up data where does it where does the data come from and how's that different than the bls data that everybody sees every year yeah or so yeah that, that's, that's a good point Jeff. we so our data what we're doing is we're we're pulling in job openings straight from employer websites around the world so we uh, real time link up real time. We're, yeah. we're indexing job openings straight from employer websites. So millions and millions of jobs uh, every single day, we're pulling into a, a data set that really provides deep uh, and, and broad insight into what's going on in the, mm-hmm. in the job market. And because a job opening is a signal of, of a hire in the future, it's forward looking. So we use our data to forecast non-farm payrolls and strengthen the economy. And it's uh, it's a it's a really powerful data set in that regard. Yep. Is there, is there the... going to be a time when we move away from surveys, for goodness sakes, and just start looking at real time data? Because <laughs> BLS is always they're they're always looking, you know, in the rears, which is yeah. Again, it's not it's not as it's not forward looking. This is, is forward looking data. It is not, and it is. I mean, yes, I I certainly and and you know, obviously we're biased, but mm-hmm. but. Uh, one of the things that has really propelled our growth over the last 10, 15 years is that there now is this alternative data set that, that mm-hmm. provides a uh, very, very uh, material signal around what's going on. And when you can look at, you know, sort of compared to Jolt's data, which is based on surveys, mm-hmm. if you, if you want to know how many job openings are 
in, in the US, just count them. I mean, that's it's sort of back to basics of just just count the actual job openings, which is exactly what we do. And so yeah. it's uh, and, and I'll stay away from sort of the, the job board pollution, but those as a signal in terms of what's actually going on, mm -hmm. job board data just does not does not provide material uh, sort of accurate signal in terms of what's really going on in the, in the job, hey, job market. Toby, quick question about the sectors. And uh, most of them make total sense to me. Uh, leisure and hospitality, get it. Uh, construction, I get it. Um, healthcare, obviously get it. The government segment for me, I think is, is curious because government doesn't necessarily create things, right? They don't produce right. anything. So part of it is like, why is, why is the government growing? And then, uh, I saw, I, I saw a post the other day about blame it on the baby boomers, like everything else. So baby <laughs> boomers have so much money in retirement. They have so much in assets, like they are spending us into the, the, the current state that we're in and government mostly that's taking care of these folks and who votes them into office Gov is government growing because baby boomers need or demand more support and have just so much in terms of wealth that that's where jobs are, are going. Or is this like a conspiratorial, like we're going to create jobs by just spending government money. Like what's your take on the government sector and what's happening there? Yeah, it, I, I think those are those are definitely contributing factors. Um, I, I think for us, I'd add a third, which is that it's it's sort of the it's the last part of the job sector of the employment base in the country that is going to show gains in sort of the post pandemic. I mean, it goes back, you know, to sort of this slide in terms of what we're seeing with a perfectly balanced job market. Mm -hmm you finally now, and it took forever and ever, you know, private sector raised wages to get people back to work so quickly and so aggressively over so yeah. many years, which has really fueled this incredible uh, economic engine that is the U.S. economy for, for 22 and 23. Mm -hmm. It takes a long time for you know, local, municipal, county governments, state mm -hmm. governments to get budgets to pass through their legislatures to raise wages to finally get people back into the government sector. Mm -hmm. And that lag, I think, is uh, now finally showing up that school districts and, and education and, and local government, state government are finally getting to the point where they can actually have a you know, wages that are going to attract people back into those jobs. And so now we're finally seeing they're actually filling those jobs now. It just took forever to get sort of caught up with the with the private sector. So That's why we have this like show, infrastructure. Chad. That's why we have this show. Thank you, well, Toby, for clarifying all that. That's Wait, and talk a little bit about infrastructure, too. I mean, because we've got obviously, you know, without without the the government and jobs we we don't have bridges we don't have roads hell we wouldn't have the internet right now right darpa created the the yeah. the internet which actually created a multitude of industries right tech industries yeah. non-tech industries yeah. so i mean moving forward that's that's a slow growth but it it, it does yeah it, it is slow growth and that's growth. another huge part of it yeah you're exactly right For, at a federal level when you look mm -hmm. at what what some of the legislation that the Biden administration passed, some of those those big infrastructure projects, mm -hmm. the um, Inflation Reduction Act and, and CHIPS Act, and those things are now starting to come online. So those dollars are starting to flow out to uh, federal projects, state and local projects who are actually now starting to build those, uh, you know, all, all that construction work is starting to trickle down into the economy. And, and you're right, not only is that helping sort of from an economic standpoint, it's, it is a long-term, um, you know, those are long-term projects with, with, mm -hmm. uh, long-term ROI characteristics. So talk about the balanced job market here. Uh, this, this, this imaginary line per se versus yeah. what we're actually seeing. So this is, so we, you know, we, we, we have been one of the themes that we've been talking about for the last couple of years in this, uh, sort of, uh, COVID era, especially as, as the Fed started hiking rates in March of 22, and, mm -hmm. and uh, you see a, a massive downtick in, in uh, labor demand, that was what led us to, to start to see that the 
the uh, imbalance that was really characterized the COVID era in terms of the job market with with just um, this massive, massive supply shock uh, that was causing huge problems um, and and the way that companies reacted, again, going back to sort of raising wages. As that started to happen, we started to see this, the equilibrium starting to grow in the job market. And our view is that that equilibrium has now been absolutely optimally achieved, that the job market today is in absolute perfect balance, which really, you know, we, the last time we saw that was sort of back in the 2015 to, you know, sort of up to 2020, really Mm. 2019, that stretch was a very, very much of a job market imbalance after the jobless recovery of the financial crisis, which was painful to live through and uh, finally, you know, started to get there in 2015. And that was a nice four year stretch. Then COVID hit, we had just this unbelievable demand with no supply, companies raising wages, remote work, uh, concessions everywhere that anything employee employees were asking for to get back to work. Employers said, yes, 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 yes. Get back to work. And, yes, yes, uh, yes. <laughs> it was so, so this is, it's really been, and, and you look at what sort of happened in the last, uh, you know, year or so with just unbelievable job growth. And, and this year, again, the job market just continues to surprise the upside. And it's a function of what employers have done to, to raise wages, get people back to work. Unemployment has stayed under 4% for, you know, I mean, it's like literally like 60 years. It's since the 60s that we haven't had a stretch like this with unemployment under 4% for this yeah. long. And there's, there's really, and, and our, our job openings uh, ticked up a little bit in March. So we expect another good jobs report in April. You know, there's, there's just nothing right now. There are a lot of things to be concerned around, uh, you know, sort of context wise backdrop, but in the, the engine itself of the job market and therefore mm-hmm. then in the U.S. economy, yeah. there really is nothing that we see that is anything other than this phenomenally uh, balanced uh, economy and, and job market. LinkUp is the leading provider of deep, accurate, and actionable labor market data. Unique in that we only get job listings from the one source of truth, the employer's website. By going to the source, we avoid all the duplicate and expired job listings that plague job boards and thereby other job data sets. Our data offers the clearest window to employers of all types and sizes throughout the world for an ever-growing number of use cases and applications. Let's touch on some of the threats uh, that you talk about. I'll, I'll bring up some that I can think of and you can add to those or add some context. Obviously, we're in an election year. Immigration is a hot button issue. Talk about immigration, its impact, mostly positive from what I've seen in, yeah. in, our, in our world. Um, you and called also, this too, Toby. You said it before anybody yeah, else did. Yeah, you did. were talking about how Im- immigration was driving this economy. And, and I was like, what? Can you say that again? And then now everybody's talking about it. Everybody's talking about it. Toby's such a cool kid. And then, <laughs> and then the other thing would be, would be rate, rate increases. You know, that, that yeah. word's coming up again. Is the Fed going to raise rate? Like, what are the threats? Talk, on, talk about those and some other threats you see in the horizon. Yeah, I, I'll touch on quickly on the immigration, and that has been a really hot topic because it is, uh, Brookings came out with a study that showed that the you know immigration numbers were way higher than anybody expected and that that is really what has powered this balance in the, in, in the job market is that they're, they're uh, filling a lot of the jobs that were going unfilled and it's provided this, this uh, greater equilibrium without having any increase whatsoever in, in inflation and, and wages have been able to stay quite moderated. So immigration has been a really strong uh, catalyst to, to where we are today, for sure. I think that, um, you know, I'll, I'll come back to rates at the end because I do think that that is a really, you know, that's sort of the curveball is what's going to happen there. Does a, uh, does a border that, closing uh, concern you? Which that looks like that's where we're going. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I mean, I think that it is. Well, I, you know, who? I'll. I, I don't know how the issue is going to get resolved. I do mm -hmm. think that the election is going to have a pretty material impact on it. I, I think that, um, you know, to the the more forceful we are in stopping the flow of, of immigration into the country, that is going to have a detrimental impact on the on the job market and the economy. Certainly, I'll leave the politics aside. Um, it is that will have a negative impact on on the, the job market, the economy for sure. So hopefully that doesn't happen. I think that that is uh, much to the country's benefit to, to um, have people uh, continue to, to immigrate to the US. Uh, so it is, that is a risk factor and I'll, I'll put that into the larger bucket too of you know election, I'd say certainly for next year and and beyond the election has got a huge risk factor i think this year shorter term i'd add you know geopolitics and you know two wars and in, in europe and the middle east are is a huge yeah. factor you've got you know the shipping and the um you know all kinds of disruption going on there and and price of oil you've got a lot of there's a lot of you know sort of <laughs> dry timber sitting around uh, that could potentially ignite. And you even look at what's going on in the markets. And, you know, again, there's, you know, the old adage of Wall Street is not Main Street, which I think people really do need to keep in mind that yes, yeah. there's a huge difference in what's going on in the capital markets globally versus what's going on in capital markets or, you know, uh, versus the just global economy. So, but but you start to see even with what's happened. I mean, the week before the March jobs numbers came out was a crazy volatile week as uh, the, the markets were trying to come to grips with this uh, higher for longer regime that has slowly made its way into the markets with the Fed not, uh, you know, not, uh, signaling that they were going to cut as aggressively as the markets had thought. The markets at the beginning of the year were estimating six or seven rate cuts this year. And, and it turns out that, you know, the Fed came in and said, well, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be three, but we're still going to cut. And now post unbelievable third, you know, blowout jobs report, <laughs> retail growth came in, you know, the, it, 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 higher than expected. Inflation has popped up a little bit again. And, the markets are just going, you know, bonkers over this. And, and it's now maybe one or two. And a lot of people starting to say no cuts this year. And that's starting to ripple through globally. So if that if that starts to spread and the markets are, you know, again, I'll, I'll stay away a little bit from sort of forecasting what's going on in the equity markets. But that that potentially uh, markets are are. Uh, fully valued, put it that way. And, and there's a chance that, you know, things might start to, that could have some ripple effects. We'll see where that goes, but it's. Are, are you expecting a raise? It sounds like you're not expecting a raise of any kind. Like we'll still get cuts, but maybe one or two versus the three to five. No, we're, 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 I don't, I, I, our view is, and, and I think in the last blog post, we said, we're still, you know, even, even when it went from the markets went from their, forecast of sort of six, seven cuts to three, we wrote in a blog pass, we'll, we'll still take the under on three, take one or two. And I would say now I don't see how they could cut rates at all. I, I just don't see a rate cut happening if I had to put a put a forecast out there. So and again, watch. this, you know, there's quote on the morning star, you know, it, there's just nothing in there that's going to lead the Fed to take a, an action one way or the other. They're going to they keep saying we're data dependent. They're going to have to see material drop in in inflation to get comfortable with cut or a really serious spike in inflation if they're going to raise again. So they're just they're not they're going to I think they're just going to sit and hold tight. And again, yeah. this goes back to this balanced job market line. We just and until there's any kind of a deviation from that, things in the economy are just humming along. This is unbelievably beneficial <laughs> to the U.S. economy and to workers, yeah. and companies, profits and earnings. And this is 
again, sort of ignoring the external factors, which no one can or should ignore, but from a job market and an economic standpoint, you couldn't dream up a better scenario. And if we have a four year repeat, like we did in 15 to 19, you know, five years of, of you know, four or five years of that, it would be phenomenal. So I just don't see that. And, and I, again, this gets into a little bit of, um, capital markets, a little bit of sort of under the hood, but the neutral rate discussions around sort of what is that neutral rate where the Fed can set interest rates where there's, it's neither expansionary or, or, or you know, it's not, it, it, it's not positive or negative. It's, it's a mm -hmm. neutral rate. The estimates are now that it is a lot higher than what the Fed, what, it, what the Fed has assumed it's been for a long time. And that's really sort of the debate is, is it, it, it might be lower than where markets think it is, but it's higher than where the Fed thinks it is. And so they're trying to settle in and how can they keep that perfectly balanced neutral rate, keep the economy going along without going too hot or too cold. That's, I think, where they're going to spend most of this year is trying to be pretty cautious about thread that. the needle thread the, the needle talk about your little your little gold bug needle. here what, 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 why do we have gold bugs all over the place what's happening here <laughs> so, that is uh going back to my uh childhood with uh, richard scary and and what do people do all day and that character gold bug uh is uh <laughs> was sort of the back in the day the where's waldo guy that you had to find on each page and uh so Anytime the gold uh, price of gold starts spiking, I pull out my gold bug and start sprinkling him on slides and charts and graphs. And, uh, with with the uh, sort of recent movement of no rate hikes and inflation starting yeah. to bubble up, the price of gold has just it's is setting uh, yeah. records uh, these days. So you can buy him at Costco, fifteen now, or so right? percent on the year, fifteen percent yeah. or so on the year increase, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, when you get, as they said, uh, I think it was a uh, article the other day in Fast Company that the uh, two thousand two thousand uh, dollar bars of gold are the new dollar fifty hot dog yeah. at, at Costco. So, <laughs> anytime that's happening, it's time for Gold Bug to make an appearance on some charts. So, so what's your take on the gold uh, spike? Is it just sort of uh, human emotion? Is it un unfounded? Um, what does it say about? <sighs> what the fed may or may not do or the economy You're like scared get, get, me into a place i don't want to i don't want to be because there are a ton of people bunkers, there are a ton of people that bunkers. care about this yes i mean are, is this is this much to do about nothing is it yes it is but it does impact emotion and people's behavior so we should care about it like where are you on the gold uh spike i i, I sort of i mean to me it is uh yeah there are a lot of people who have a lot of passionate belief in in gold and and what it means and in eras like this i think to me you know i sort of take both sides of that joel uh in mm -hmm. one it is it is um you you can go down some rabbit holes getting too deep into sort of the oh, mindset yeah. around the price mm -hmm. you know spiking price of gold i think for 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 me it is interesting in these times of huge uncertainty and a lot of, you know, and again, you, whether it's economic, uh, is certainly on what the markets are doing. Also that, you know, going back to where the world is these days, whether it's in the U S and politically or geopolitically, there, there is a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot of fear and mm -hmm. doubt, you know, as we said, uh, early on in our predictions for this year, there's going to be a lot of fear and loathing to, uh, you know, <laughs> Hunter Thompson, a lot of fear and loathing this year. And, Spiking gold is emblematic of that, where people just start to get really concerned about, and, and when it's, uh, I wouldn't say necessarily panic, uh, but it's, it, there's a lot of anxiety uh, and, and, and not unfounded either reasons for, for a lot of that. So I think that's, that's the more interesting aspect of a spike in gold is, and, you know, I sort of make fun of it with a, you know, Richard scary character, but it, it is, it's a really, it's, it's a real thing. And, and there is a yeah. lot of anxiety. And, and so I, if we, you know, I haven't taken a look at it, but if you would take a look, I bet at the generator market, it's gone up. 
right? Uh, and I've seen more people. I mean, there's more. Guns. There's more. Yeah, there's more. I mean, not like we need more guns, for God's sakes, Jesus. Um, we already have yeah. more guns than we have more people in this country. But I mean, you know, it seems like we're getting into a prepper mood, uh, not to mention, you know, Civil War. The movie actually came out this week. Yeah, so that, I that mean, is all, yeah. There's there's a lot of trending that's happening here um, that is is Doom being pushed spoiling. by yeah yeah little little, little doom yeah. spreading that's happening and and and, and, and that is peppers. that is only going to grow as we get closer and closer to November yep. I, I yep. think where that is going to reach peak levels this this summer and fall and, and that's why we're here to make people feel a little better we're here to like <laughs> talk about balance and Goldilocks and don't like get off the ledge so Toby as we head into a new bugs. month. Should we should we expect more of the same? Do you see any yeah. curveballs here? Yeah. Like talk about next month. I, yeah, I mean that, that's a, that's a much better way to end is is trying to walk people off the ledge. I mean we <laughs> we just we see that um, again what I said earlier. There's nothing in the job market that leads us to believe that uh, this this current path we're on this golden path. Austin Goolsby called it this golden path we're on. And, uh, some at some point last year, and we're still on it, and we don't see that anything's going to knock us off that that golden path. Now, again, that doesn't mean it's not going to happen, but we're certainly not seeing anything in our data uh, now that that's true. And and as I said, our, our March job openings ticked up a little bit. We expect decent numbers in in April. Spring is always a pretty good hiring uh, start of a hiring cycle season. Mm -hmm. So uh, we we see a lot Ooh. of reasons. Or Thank just you. Confidence. So, well, uh, going just forward. for clarification, though, I mean, the the golden path. This is for Joel. For m mostly, that is much different than the golden shower, Joel. So I want to make sure, make sure we get that out there. It's way too early for that. <laughs> way too early. Way too so early. So unfair. As you can hear, Chad's wife in the background laughing at that one. That was good. That was good. <laughs> Uh, I got to get a thank you, Toby, somehow. Thank you, Toby. <laughs> I know. I know. Thank you, Toby. Uh, for for our uh, watchers, people out there uh, checking this podcast out, where can they find out more about LinkUp? Where can they connect with you? LinkUp.com is the best uh, best way. Uh, definitely. Uh, Keep it simple. Keep it, yep. simple. Keep it simple. Chad, that's another it. month in the can. Excellent. I feel a lot better. I'm off the ledge, everybody. We out. Gross. We out. Thank you for listening to what's it called? The podcast. The chat. The cheese. Brilliant. They talk about recruiting. They talk about technology. But most of all, they talk about nothing. Just a lot of shout outs of people you don't even know. And yet you're listening. It's incredible. And not one word about cheese. Not one. Cheddar. Blue. Nacho. Pepper Jack. Swiss. There's so many cheeses. And not one word. So weird. Anywho, be sure to subscribe today on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. That way you won't miss an episode. And while you're at it, visit www.chatcheese.com. Just don't expect to find any recipes for grilled cheese. It's so weird. We out!